Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Please excuse all this mess. This is what happens when you work 80 hour weeks. So for those new here, my name's Jenny. I'm a second year family medicine resident. I am happily married. I'm a mom and I'm currently pregnant. <laughs> so um, quick rundown. Today is Saturday. I'm working in patient medicine, but I'm hoping that during my lunch I can do my one hour glucose tolerance tests. So for those new here, or for those following me for a long time, know that I had gestational diabetes with my last pregnancy with Wyatt, and it sucked. Um, and so this time, I think this video is going to be a combination of two things. Um, one, did I pass my glucose tolerance test? And two is what I did to prepare for it. And three is um, a little bit about intermittent fasting. So when I did my first video about diabetes, uh, gestational diabetes um, and having that and what I ate during the day, a lot of you guys were asking like what actually it is. And if you have it during your pregnancy, does that mean that you have diabetes? So the pathophysiology behind this is that during pregnancy, your there's lots of different contributing factors, but um, the main one is that your placenta, which supplies food and nutrients to the baby, gives off these hormones, um, which make you insulin resist a little bit more insulin resistant, which means that you need to pump out more insulin from your pancreas in order to... Um, get all the glucose into your cells. Also, um, it causes the liver to release off a little bit of glucose as well, just so to feed the baby. So, to get rid of gestational diabetes is <laughs> when you deliver your baby. Um, usually it goes away. If you have any underlying um, insulin resistant already, then you may be at risk. Um, populations such as Asians, Pacific Islanders, um, African Americans, Native Americans, all those populations have shown to have an increased risk of getting gestational diabetes. Um, and it's also important to check with your doctor after you deliver because sometimes there's a genetic component. Basically it's important to check with your doctor because there's underlying diabetes and it comes out during pregnancy. So most people gestational diabetes will go away but it's important to check because you might have underlying diabetes that continues on. Um, so yeah let's get to work. I'm pretty sure I have lots of other things to say. I want to show you a little bit about what I ate and stuff like that um, a few days prior and yeah. So I think it's important to understand a little bit more about insulin resistance. Um, what insulin resistance is is basically type 2 diabetes where your body is making enough insulin you know your pancreas is pumping out this insulin but the receptors are just either not responding how they should or it just needs more insulin in order to pick up the sugar glucose from your cells and bring it into the body this happens in two ways where you just eat too much sugar and carbs and um and over time, your body needs to increase its insulin levels. And over time, of the receptors seeing this insulin all the time becomes less reactive. Or like in pregnancy, where your placenta just basically gives off these hormones that make your receptors doesn't recognize the insulin as much. So as I said earlier, you know, if you have any form of like underlying insulin resistant already you may be at harder uh, bigger risk of developing gestational diabetes just because your pancreas has to pump out additional amount of insulin while you are pregnant there's plenty of other factors but I think that's one of the contributing factors um, I started intermittent fasting I want to say in in med school for the wedding, but then I've been pretty consistent with it with it for the last few years. I would want to say, um, and a lot of people I 
I've had conversations where people think that you're starving yourself with intermittent fasting, but that's not the case at all. So intermittent fasting is when you eat from a certain time point to another certain time point, like, but you eat all your calories within that time to prevent these insulin spikes throughout the day. Um, this Many, many studies have shown that this in itself decreases your insulin resistant and it has shown to actually cure diabetes. Um, you guys have seen The Biggest Loser on TV. They've done research on people who've been through that, lost a significant amount of weight, but then again, they gained that weight back. And we're thinking, why is that? And they found that with severe caloric restriction um, your body's metabolism slows down and no matter what you do you eat less and less and less but you still gain 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 is because your body ultimately decreases its metabolic rate um, this does not happen with uh, intermittent fasting because you are still eating the same amount of calories, you're still burning fat, you're, you know, and uh, using energy, but you're using it within the same time frame. So your metabolic rate stays the same, um, your insulin resistance goes down, you continue to lose weight. During your fasting time, you burn off fat because you don't have any sugars to burn off. Um, and so your weight continues to go down, your insulin resistance continues to go down, but your metabolic rate still stays the same. Does that make sense? There's lots of research that has shown this, and that's why um, I continue to do it. There's also other research that has been shown to that it decreases the rate of dementia and Alzheimer's, and um, there's studies being done about using it to treat cancer, but that's like a whole nother talk on its own. Specifically for gestational diabetes, I wanted to do it um, because I feel like, well, I've been doing it this whole time, and so I feel like this in itself will really help with, one, my insulin sensitivity, resistance sensitivity um, and so I really think I'm gonna pass this time I've been checking uh, my glucose at home after I eat and it's been like under 100 <laughs> so um, we will see I brought my little glucometer today they won't tell me what the lab is today but I will just check basically my finger stick glucose right after and I'll show you guys what it is so we'll find out together if I pass or not um, so that's my little spiel on intermittent fasting. I know that's kind of quick, but maybe I'll talk about it a little bit more because I have to get into work now. All right, everyone. So I just finished my uh, seeing all 12 of my patients plus doing some discharge. Now I am going to do my glucose tolerance test. One second. It's currently 12.30. So it's currently 12.30. All I had today so far was water. And I know a lot, what a lot of you guys are gonna say. You're gonna be like, oh, your baby needs glucose, blah, blah, blah. You're sleeping, you're not eating, and your baby still gets glucose because your body naturally has that. The placenta gives off hormones, so it releases this from your liver. So, baby's still getting nutrients. All right, I'm back. So, just walked across the street. I have my old glucose glucometer here, and we are gonna check oops, what my glucose is. Okay, dude, my blood is really runny. This is not a good sign. Oh, 
Oh my gosh. 137. So I'm hoping that they use the cutoff of 40 as passing and because I swear if I have to do another glucose tolerance test this is gonna be <laughs> ridiculous but yeah so some clinics use 130 as the cutoff point other clinics use 140 but with 130 you have such high like false positives you know so I'm gonna be really pissed off <laughs> hi everyone so I'm home now it's actually pretty late if I fell asleep on the couch again per usual um, but I just wanted to do a recap of today and I'm not gonna lie I'm <laughs> I'm actually really disappointed or pretty disappointed when I saw the numbers um, as you guys saw 137 and that could go either way but I thought about it and that is significantly better than the first time I took the test um, first time I took the glucose tolerance test my <laughs> number was 195 and when I took the three hour glucose tolerance test, I failed the test um, by like one point on each. I believe my last number was like 81, which is like one point over and another number was like two points over. So um, I think it just depends on what cutoff they use, but I just thought to myself, I just spent this whole time telling people about how uh, intermittent fasting decreases insulin resistance and blah blah blah, blah and how I think I'm gonna pass my test um, so yeah I was I was disappointed because I thought that I would obviously pass because I've been checking my sugar even after I eat this crazy huge carb loaded meal like an hour after and my level is like 95 104 it's never even been in the 110s 120s um, so I guess we'll just have to see and um, but I do think that I have I because of intermittent fasting my insulin resistance has decreased um, as I said last year when I took this or when I was pregnant with Wyatt and I took this test my level was 195 or 194 and that's really high and that's most people would just say oh you just you just have gestational diabetes no point in taking the three-hour test anyways um so i hope you enjoyed this video i suspect you guys will have a lot of questions about intermittent fasting and gestational diabetes just leave them in the comment section below i'm pretty sure there's a big community here who can either help answer your questions or will probably have the same questions as you um so leave them in the comment section below so everyone can benefit from seeing them and seeing responses. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.